Welcome back to the School of Motion Graphics. My name is CM De La Vega, and we have an awesome tutorial today. It's a World Cup inspired tutorial. We'll be creating a soccer promo. Now, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and let's get started. To create the stop motion effect of the soccer player performing the bicycle kick, you can use a series of images or you can use the video footage and freeze frame in key moments and key poses. And that's exactly what I did for this, this footage of Ronaldo performing this amazing bicycle kick in the Champions League. I ended up with seven key poses, key moments, and let me show you. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now let me show you how to freeze frame, cut them out, and add the white border. So what you can do is, Grab your footage and click and drag to the composition icon and let's scrub it and let's find the moment where he's about to do the bicycle kick. And select the very first frame and for example, let's say this is the first frame. Make sure that your layer is selected and let's splice the layer. Hit Control Shift D, we splice it. Let's delete the bottom one and hit B. When you hit B, it sets the end point to your cursor and let's right click and trim comp to work area. Now what we need to do is we need to freeze frame. So select your footage, right click and go to time freeze frame. It's now frozen. Now what we need to do is cut them out. So let's grab the pen tool. Let me zoom in and let's start cutting him out and definitely take your time. This one for this tutorial, I'm gonna go pretty fast. We have a lot of ground to cover, a lot of cool techniques to show you and cutting him out is not the most priority wise, is not the highest priority technique to show you. So I'm gonna go fast. Okay, so we have Ronaldo cut out. What we can do now is create a new solid and make comp size, you can make it white and go back to your footage, hit M for mask, let's select the mask, let's go to edit copy, go to your solid layer and let's go to edit paste and it'll paste the mask on the solid layer. Hit M for mask and let's drill down to mask expansion and let's bring it up. So we can bring it up to a value of four for this example. Now let me show you how to create the stop motion and let's create a new composition and let's call this bicycle kick promo and I'll make it 1920 by 1080 choose your best frame rate and make it about seven seconds long now let's go and remember that th there was seven key moments that I froze so let's select these seven and let's bring it down let me turn off the audio and let's hide all of the layers except for the first one and let's go one by one and just double check that we we have them in the right position. So let's go to the second one. That's good. Let's go to the third. Perfect. Number four, maybe we can bring them up a little bit. Number five, here. Number six, here. And number seven. Okay, perfect. Now let's select all of the layers, Control A, and let's activate the 3D switch and make them 3D layers. Let's go to two views. And for this view, let's switch it to the top view. What we want to do is we want to place each layer 100 pixels away from each other. So grab the second one, hit P for position, and let's make it minus 100 pixels. So it's 100 pixels closer to the camera. Let's go to the third one, and let's make it minus 200. Let's go to the fourth one. Let's make it minus 300. And let's go to the fifth one, make it minus 400, minus 500. And number seven, you guessed it, minus 600. Let's go to active camera, one view, and actually let's go to the custom view so you can see what we have. And let's spin around. So this is what we have. And let's go back to active camera. And now let's grab number two through seven. And what I'm going to do is move them to frame 10 and every two frames, let's sequence each layer. So one, two, and let's grab the third one. One, two, let's go to the fourth one. One, two, number five, one, two, number six, one, two, number seven. 
And for the first one, we'll animate the first one only. Hit P for position. Let's put a keyframe. Let's go to frame 10. Put another keyframe and do Shift F9 for easy ease in. Let's go back to the first one. Let's zoom out and let's move him down in the Y axis. And let's check it out. Okay, let's see it. Nice. Let's zoom in. Perfect. And remember, they're in 3D, so let's show you in 3D as well. And it'll look nice when we rotate the camera. Now let's create a camera. So go to Layer, New, Camera, and we'll make it 35 millimeter. Let's move it up. And let's create a new null object, and we'll call this Rotate Camera. And we'll make it a 3D layer. Let's switch it to the top view. Now, this is preference for you. You can set the null object at the back. So when you rotate, it's always rotating from the back. You can put it in the front. So when it's rotating, it's rotating from the front. I personally like it right in the middle. So we'll put it in the middle and we'll make it minus 300. And let's parent the camera to the null object, which is the rotate camera. And we switch to active camera. Zoom in and hit off rotation. We're rotating right from the middle. And when we put keyframes, it'll look nice. Now let's do one quick thing. Let's go to the first one and let's add, let's add an effect and let's go to color correction, tritone. Actually, let's go to the last one so you can see him. Let's go and delete this one. Let's go to the last one so you can see it. Let's go to tritone. And let's make this blue. And let's copy this effect for all of them. So this is how you can give each one a nice tint. And obviously, we make it blue. You can make it green, yellow, red, whatever color is your country. And now we're going to create the background, add some images, and start spicing it up. Go to Layer, New Solid and make it comp size and we'll make it this green and hit okay. We'll call this, hit enter on the keyboard and let's call it BG. Let's bring it all the way to the bottom and let's bring in a picture. This is an iconic picture of Rio de Janeiro, Christ the Redeemer. Let's bring it down. You can use a picture, you can use a video. Actually video would look really nice if you do have a video and we can bring it down. Let's make it black and white, color correction, black and white. And let's switch the blending mode to overlay. Now let's create this bar that's in the middle. And to create this bar, we'll be using a shape layer. So let's bring this up and make sure you have all your layers deselected. Let's go up here and select rectangle tool and double click. When you double click, it creates a shape layer the size of your composition. So we're going to fill it in with this yellow and we'll give it a stroke of 20 pixels and a white color for the border. And let's drill down to the rectangle path one. Let's unlink it and let's make it 2000 by 900 pixels. And we can rename this to bar. And let's move this all the way down here. And what we can do is let's rotate this. So let's go down and each shape layer has its own transform properties, which is really cool and it has a skew. So let's skew it minus 45 and let's rotate it minus 45 as well. And let's animate this bar expanding from zero all the way to what it is right now. So let's go to zero, zero. And for the scale, let's put a keyframe. Let's unlink it. Let's go forward 10 frames, put a keyframe and let's go forward another 10 frames to 20 and let's put a keyframe. So Right here, we'll go to zero. And here, we'll make it 140. And we can right click, go to keyframe assistant, and put easy ease. And for the last one, it's at 100. Perfect. Shift F9 for easy ease in. And let's play it out. Nice. Perfect. Now this is my favorite part. We'll be using shape layers to create the pentagon pattern and the line burst. To create this pentagon pattern, 
is relatively simple. It's lots of fun. And like I mentioned, we'll be using shape layers. So let's go back to our main comp and just make sure that you have all your layers deselected. Let's go up and let's select the polygon tool and let's double click. And the fill, let's make sure that you set the fill to none. And for the stroke color, you set it to white and the stroke width, we set it to five pixels. Now here, let's rename this shape layer and let's call it Pentagon. And let's solo it so we can concentrate on just building the animation. And what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit and drill down to Polystar Path 1. In points, since it's a pentagon, make sure that you set it to 5. And we'll animate the outer radius first. So let's go to 0, 0. And let's put a keyframe. And let's make it 0. Let's go to frame 10. And let's make it 50. And let's go to frame 25. And let's put 25. So this one, hit Shift F9 for easy ease in. For the one in the middle, let's select it, right click, and keyframe assistant easy ease, which is F9, and let's check it out. So it's very simple. It's just scaling up. Let me zoom in so you can see better. Scales up, and it scales a little bit down. Let's animate one more property, and let's animate the rotation. So we'll start at zero, and let's go all the way to 25. And let's make it 145 and hit shift F9 for easy ease in. Let's check it out. Nice. Now we can do one more thing and we can use trim path to animate the border to remove the border. So click on polystar path one and let's add a trim path and let's drill down. And at frame 10, let's animate the start. Let's put a keyframe and let's go all the way to frame 25. And let me zoom in so you can see. And what we can do is we can animate the start to 100 and it'll animate the border and it'll remove the border. So it's looking good. It's looking pretty good. Now let's repeat this so we can create the rows and the columns by adding a repeater. So let's add our repeater, go to add repeater and let's drill down. Let's give it eight copies. And the repeater has its own transform properties. So let's go down to the transform properties and let's move it here. And let's space it 250 pixels away from each other. And let's check it out. Nice. Now let's create a second row. And for the second row, let's place the pentagon in between. And to create a second row, let's add a second repeater. So let's add another repeater. And we'll make it two copies. And for the transform properties, we'll make it 125. And let's bring it down 150. And let's check it out. Nice. Now let's finish this off and let's copy this pattern. And let's add a third repeater. And the third one, let's make it four copies. And let's go down and for the position, we'll make it zero and let's push it down 300 pixels. And let's check it out. Perfect. And what we can do is go to the main transform properties of the layer and we can move it all the way up in the corner, in the upper left corner. Actually, it's not the anchor point, it's the position. Let's move it up and let's move it up and let's play it back. Nice. And we can trim right here at one. And let's unsolo and let's put it right above the bar. And we can change the blending mode to overlay. And let's check it out. Nice. And what we can do is we can make another copy, just control D, and let's push it forward. And this one we can set it to normal. So we have one that is overlay and one is normal. And let's check it out. Nice. And we can repeat this. Select Control D. And we can sequence them out. It's looking good.
I hope it wasn't too complicated. Now let's jump in and let's do the line burst and you'll see it'll be a lot easier. To create this burst is pretty simple. And once again, we'll be using shape layers. Let's go to our comp and let's go up and select the rectangle tool and let's double click. For the fill, make sure that you set it to a solid color. You can select white. And for the stroke, let's remove the stroke and set it to none. Let's go down and let's solo it and let's rename it to burst. Let's drill down to rectangle path one and let's change the size to 10 by 300. And let's animate the size and the position. Let's start first with the size. Let's put a keyframe at zero, zero. Let's put a keyframe. Let's move forward to frame 10 and put another keyframe. Let's go back and this one will make it zero. Let's play it back. Very simple. It's just scaling up. Now let's animate the position. And let's go forward to frame 20. And let's animate in the Y axis. And let's go all the way up to minus 1400. And let's play it back. Perfect. So it's scaling up and it's shooting upwards in the Y axis. Now let's repeat this to create the burst. And what we'll do is let's add a repeater and we'll give it 18 copies and the repeater like I mentioned has its own transform properties and let's go down to its transform properties now for the position we'll make it zero zero so they're on top of each other all 18 copies are on top of each other and let's rotate it so we'll rotate it 20 degrees because 360 divided by 18 is 20 and we play back we have a burst and that's how you create a burst. Now let's add one more thing and we can add after the repeater, we can add a zigzag. Let's move it down after the repeater and let's make it five one. And you get this, this nice look. Perfect. And that's how you create the line burst. It's animation time. Let's move the camera and have some fun. Let's select all of the freeze frame one through seven hit S for scale and let's scale it up to 200%. Now let's go to the rotate camera, which is our null object. And remember, we parented the camera to this null object. Hit R for rotation and the cursor, let's bring it to zero, zero. And let's add keyframes for the X and the Y. And for the Y rotation, we'll start out with minus 35. And let's go forward to two seconds and let's make it 15 and zero. And let's select these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, and make it easy ease. And grab these keyframes, hit control C to copy. Let's go forward to four seconds and hit control V to paste. And let's check it out. Let's continue with our animation. And this time, let's bring in the soccer ball. Let's bring in our soccer ball layer and let's make it a 3D layer. Let's switch to two views horizontal. And for this view, make sure that you have it set it to the top view. Now, this last layer is actually Ronaldo 07. So hit P for position and we can see that he's minus 600 pixels. So we need to have the ball at least minus 600 pixels as well. And we'll actually make it minus 605. Now you can see that since we're rotating the camera, and the ball is actually a flat image. It looks a little bit skewed and we can fix it. So select the soccer ball layer and right click and go to transform, auto orient and hit orient towards camera. And no matter where the camera, it will always be facing the camera. So let's move this up. Let's move it up and let's scale it down to about 50. And let's move it down here, perfect and hit P to open the position properties and let's put a keyframe. Let's go backwards to the beginning and let's put a keyframe and all we're going to do is simple. Just move it back all the way here. Let's zoom out, zoom out and let's push it down and we can use these handles and give it a little bit of a curve and hit R for rotation, shift R and let's rotate in the Z and let's give it three revolutions and let's check it out.
it's a little too fast. So what we can do is go back to two views. It's a little bit too far away. We can make it closer. And this might be something that you might have to tweak a little bit of trial and error. Okay, let's say this is good. Now what we can do from this point when he kicks it, let's splice the layer. Remember, control shift D, let's splice it. Hit U to see the keyframes. And what we can do is let's delete these keyframes. Let's add a keyframe for the position. And let's simple. Let's just move this this way, this direction. And let's give it a rotation. And let's rotate it maybe four. And we can cut this layer right here. Let's trim this layer right here. And let's check it out. This might be a little bit too fast, so let's move it. And then right here, when he strikes it, we can add the burst and hit P for position. Let's move the burst and let's move it all the way up here where the soccer ball is. And let's check it out. We're almost done. Let's add some text, make it 3D, and add some lights. So the very last step is to add the text. So select on the text layer and type in Brazil or the name of your country. And I'm using the Copa America. I worked on Copa America last year. And this is their font. And I'm using this color for Brazil and give it a stroke. And I have this color for the border and a value of 13 pixels. Now what we can do is add a very simple animation. Let's solo this layer and let's go down to the text and let's animate. Let's enable the per character text animation and let's animate the scale. Let's animate the rotation and let's animate the opacity. So let's go down here, let's go to zero, zero, and let's scale it down to zero. Let's rotate it minus 45 and opacity zero. And let's go to the range selector. And for the start, let's put a keyframe. Let's go forward about one second and let's make this 100. And let's go to advance. And where it says easy low, let's make it 100. Perfect. And what we can do is we can make this 3D. So what we're going to do is let's unsolo it. Let's go here and let's bring this over here. Let's bring this down. Let's go to the top view. Let's make it a 3D layer. And let's push it back. Let's go back to the active camera. And hit Control K to open the composition settings and go to the 3D render tab and switch from classic 3D to ray trace 3D. And when you do that, if we drill down, we have this new option, geometry options, and we can change the bevel style to concave. For example, we can make it five. And we can change the extrusion depth to about, let's say, 75 pixels. And we can add a light. So let's add, let's add an ambient light, first of all. And let's make it 25. And let's add a point light. And let's make it 100. And let's enable cast shadows. And leave the darkness and the diffusion at these values for now. And this point light. Let's go to, let's make it two views horizontal. And I'm going to move it a little bit here. And the cool thing about using a light is that these guys, we want to, these guys could be casting shadows. So let's go to Ronaldo. Let's go to the freeze frame and hit AA 
to open the material options and where it says cast shadows, let's turn it on. And it's really nice because each guy is casting a shadow and we play it back. And the animation that we did for the text in 2D holds up in 3D as well. So that's really cool. And we can also see the border that we created, that nice yellow, yellow orange highlight border. It holds up as well in 3D. And we might need to tweak the placement of the text, but let's check it out. Yeah, we need to move it higher. That's not a problem. We can move it higher. And we can scale it up too. And the ball is being affected by the lights. And we can turn that off. So let's go to the soccer ball and hit AA. And where it says accept lights, let's turn it off. And let's play it back. OK, let's check it out. Nice. OK, here it is, bigger. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something new. Now, if there's any tutorial that you would like to see, please comment below. I would love to hear your ideas. And if you want to make some money and get started in the field of motion graphics, check out the book that I wrote. It's available on Amazon. I put a link to the book in the description below. Enjoy the World Cup and may the best team win.